one. This is a code enforcement hearing for the city of North Miami. Today is, what's today? Wednesday, September 25th, 2019. And I am Beatrice Kezzo, Special Magistrate for the City of North Miami. The purpose of this hearing is to determine if a code violation exists at your property as observed and cited by, the, by a code enforcement officer of the city. If the city is not able to prove its case, then I will dismiss the case and you may leave. These proceedings are being recorded. Therefore, all persons who are speaking should do so one at a time to ensure that all testimony is clearly audible on the recording device. If English is not your primary language, then please inform me when I call your case. We have a translator. Do we have a translator? Our translators are not here this morning. I think they did. Okay, I'm assuming our translators are running late. Because if we have any Creole and Spanish speaking residents, we're going to need our translator. If somebody can look into it. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to skip the line that says you need you have a translator present here today. Um, okay. When your case is called, the property owner, agent for the property owner, and any witness that you may have should come forward to the podium on the left side of the room. When asked, please speak directly into the microphone and say aloud your name, your business or mailing address, and your relationship to the property. If you are not the property owner or an attorney representing the property owner, then you must present a notarized power of attorney affidavit in order for your testimony to be taken on behalf of the property owner. For new cases, you will be asked for the record if you are aware of and understand the violation that is being heard today. And do you understand what is required to resolve the violation? Please answer accordingly. The city will present its case first, and then the property owner and or violator will be given an opportunity to testify on their own behalf, to bring forward witnesses to testify, to present evidence and photographs, and to cross-examine the city's witnesses. Following the case presentation, I will issue a finding of fact on the case. If I find that a violation of city codes exists or existed at your property, then depending on the case type, I will set an abatement date for the violation to be resolved. Or for repeat violations, I will impose a daily fine amount. For new non-repeat cases, my order will include an abatement date by which you must resolve the violation and a daily fine amount that I may impose at a future hearing date should the violation not be resolved by the abatement date. If I find sufficient cause to postpone enforcement action at this time, I will table this case proceeding to another hearing date in the future. If you do not agree with my finding of fact and or ruling, then the property owner may appeal the administrative order on the case to the circuit court. An appeal must be filed within 30 days of the date of the execution of the administrative order to be appealed. In accordance with Florida statutes, if a person decides to appeal any decision made by the special magistrate with respect to any matter considered at these proceedings, then the person will need a verbatim record of the proceeding. This record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. I think our translators have just walked in. So we do have a translator if you need one. Um, where was I? Let me just go back here. In accordance with Florida statutes, if a person decides to appeal any decision action made by the special magistrate with respect to any matter considered at these proceedings, then the person will need a verbatim record of the proceeding. This record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. The cost of obtaining the verbatim record shall be the sole responsibility of the appellant, and it is recommended that persons who plan to appeal their case should provide their own court reporter at this proceedings. Pursuant to city codes, 
if the city of North Miami prevails in prosecuting a case before the special magistrate, the city shall be entitled to recover all costs incurred in prosecuting the case. The current cost assessment amount is $100 per case. Once the city records an order that imposes a fine and authorizes a lien against the property, then the city will charge additional administrative fees to record and release the lien. If you're here, you're present, and will be given testimony on a case, please stand and raise your right hand so the officer could administer the oath. Now, if you're giving testimony today on a case, please rise and raise your right hand as I issue the oath. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in these proceedings will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say a lot, I do. Thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and do the translators. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the translations which you are about to give in these proceedings will be accurate and correct to the best of your knowledge, skill, nobody say I do? Thank you. Can you please Henry remain Austin. standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, please announce for the record if there are any additions, corrections, and or deletions to the hearing agenda. Case number SDNOV 2019-00068, postponed. Case number SDNOV 2019-00069, postponed. Case number C. EGMP 2019-00064, complied. Case number CEEXP 2019-00108, complied. Case number MHVIO 2019-00274, complied. Case number MHVIO 2019-00201, complied. Case number CEODS 2019-00061, complied. Case number CEGMS 2019-00007, complied. Case number CEFAW 2019-00087, complied. Case number CEWWC 2019-00084, complied. Case number CEWRA 2019-00084, 0018 complied. Case number CENBR 2019-00053 complied. Case number CEFOB 2019-00015 postponed. Case number CEFAW 2019-00167 complied. Case number CEZCU 2019-00010, postponed. Case number CEODS 2019-00068, complied. Case number CEPOM 2019-00008, complied. Case number CESIP 2019-00044, complied. Case number CEEXP 2019-00055, Zero zero one five five postponed. Case number C E F A W twenty nineteen zero zero one four zero postponed. Case number C E B L R twenty nineteen zero 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 two one postponed. Case number C E J N K twenty nineteen zero 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 three eight complied. Case number CEBPR 2019-00037, postponed. Case number CEZPU 2019-00057, postponed. Case number CEBPR 2019-00029, postponed. Case number CEBLR 2019-00032, postponed. And lastly, case number CESIP 2019-00049, postponed. That is all the amendments to the agenda. All right.
please call the first case. First case is Jean Mervoir Jean, case number CTTRA 20190006. Officer Jose Perez. Sir, please come forward. <coughs> the podium, sir. Do you speak English or do you need an interpreter? speak English. You speak English? Yeah. Okay, please state your full name for the record. My name is Mayor Virgin. All right. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Mr. Perez, can you please state your name for the record? Mayor Virgin. No, Mr. Oh. Perez. Jose Perez, yeah. Code Enforcement Officer for the City of North Miami. And how long have you been a Code Enforcement Officer for the City of North Miami? For the City of North Miami, approximately a year and a half quarter now did you come in contact um, with the property of mr. Jean Mervoir Jean on July 2nd 2019 yes and how did you come in contact with this property I was patrolling the area and I came upon the um, debris of a tree removal <laughs> did you see anyone on the property at the time no okay did you see anyone ever on the property uh, no Okay, now did you take photos on July 2nd, 2019? Yes. If we can place the photos on the screen. Mr. Perez, do you recognize these photographs? Yes. How do you recognize these photographs? Uh, I took these photographs and they're stamped with my name and the time. Now, I want to divert your attention to um, the photograph that is currently on the screen. Is that the homeowner's address, 110 Northwest 122nd Street? Yes. And is that, where is this, where is this um, picture from? That's from Google Earth. And when was this from? Mm. Was uh, it from March 2019? Approximately. Okay. At this time, the city would like to introduce the photographs into evidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Mr. Perez, um, what is the difference between the photos from Google Maps on March 2019 and the photos that you took on July 2nd, 2019? Well, as depictured, you could see that the tree was cut to about midway on the stump and the uh, debris was left on the swell area. Now, would this fall under um, a type of a tree that was abused? Yes. And what is the term exactly that um, in, in the violation that you gave the homeowner? So the violation was open for hat racking, which is when a tree is cut to a condition where it, the tree will die without being removed completely. And is this what you witnessed on July 2nd when you um, viewed this property and, and the tree on the property? Yes. I have no further questions for this witness at this time. Mr. Jean, is this your property? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the tree is not completely destroyed. And he has already started to grow back. What yeah. happened? Because one part was fell, the other, the bottom one was too, too, too large. It's open, but crack in the middle. I have the guy mm. potted like a trimming, and then two boys no fell on the electrical wire or fell in the house. That's what I do with the job like this, and then. The officer maybe passed by the time they do the work, and then he saw the debris on, on the outside before they remove it. That's why they gave me the citation. You said the tree was split in the, down the middle? Yeah, this happened before, break the gate outside, 
and the other part was still, and then about to do the same thing again. That's what I bring it down. Okay. You didn't contact the city prior to cutting it down? No, no, I don't contact because I have the guys who are supposed to be trimming the big part. That's all. From your photograph, the um, does the tree look rotten? Does it look? Which one are you referring to, Judge? At the trunk of the tree. I think it's the first photograph. This one. This one. What's going on there with this tree? Uh, Mr. Perez. To me, it doesn't appear to be rotten. As you can see by some of the greenery that was still left, the tree had life. Yeah, Judge, and, and just to, um, for the how the code defines um, the term of how checking it means to uniformly remove the major part of the tree's crown, reducing it in height and leaving a number of large bare limbs characterized by a number of stubbed off branches. Um, and that's that's clearly depicted in, in the photographs here and, and what was done to this tree. I understand, but um, I, I'm talking about the trunk of it. I'm talking about the p photograph that I'm looking at now. I would say no, that it's, it's not rotten, as, as depicted by the greenery that is left. Okay, because it almost looks like a dead tree to me. All right. No. Okay. Does the city have any other witnesses? Uh, not at this time, Judge. No. Sir, do you have any other evidence? Anything else you want to add? No, because the tree have a, the waist, the tall on the bottom, that's a big hole. Can't hold the top. That's the only reason it is going to be like this. What is this metal thing that, that's leaning because against the tree? They have a big hole. I have a, I have a dog. The dog always going there. I don't want him. That's what, it, that's what I put the tall to block him. Can't fit in there. So there's a hole? <coughs> yeah. Where is it? Did you introduce the citation so that I um I know what the the fine is? Um I can judge one second. Can we please display, Mr. Perez, do you recognize this? Is this a citation um, that you gave to the homeowner that day regarding the tree abuse on 7-2-19? Yes, that is a citation I wrote on 7-2-19. At this time, the city would like to introduce the citation into evidence. Okay. <laughs> Give me one second. I'm looking at the photograph from Google Earth. Do you want me to go back, Judge? Yes, please. Okay. Google Earth. I think it's number five, right? Right here. Yes, this is the tree. This is the tree. Correct. Okay. Sir, so this is the tree that you cut down, correct? Yeah, it's a big ficus tree. Huh? It's a ficus tree there. Okay. So this is how the tree was prior to you cutting it down? That's not it. This is it right here. This is it. 
That's it, right? That's all science. Okay. And do we have a date stamp for this photo? Yes. Yes, it's March of 2019. March of 2019. This is a beautiful tree. Okay. Now I get it. All right. And you said, sir, it was leaning? Yeah. How so? Where, where, it was leaning where? On the, on, 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 on the middle of the, of the right. Huh? On the middle. What do you mean by that? Because on, on, the, on the middle of the, it's, it's not the full tree. So you got a lot of branch to, to make it together. And then one side, when it's too big, it's open. The, the, other, the other side already break than before. Do you have any photographs of that? Because we cannot see that from the you know, this picture that we're seeing. Years, I'm year, sorry? By years ago, about five or six years ago. Once okay. I was filmed. Well, I'm looking at a photograph that was, um, this photo is from March, March 2019. This is a beautiful tree, green leaves. I don't see anywhere that it's leaning. Um, and this is the tree that you cut down. And I know you testified about um, electrical wires. But yeah, from but this photograph, the electrical wires are oh, long distance from this tree here. Can you open it? Because I can see the wires from this mine. Way, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see where the electrical wires are in this photo? I know where they are, but when, when the tree, the, the leaves grow back, always grow up. Is always touching. That's what I keep. I keep touching many, many times. I, I can trim. see you trimming. In fact, the second tree is closer to the wires than the one in that you cut down. It's all the same. That's all the same. That's the other tree on the back. The, the, the one I'm talking about is the one have a big. Well, uh, it's a big size of the tree, and then most of the time when it's grow up like this. If you don't hurry up, cut them up, it might be open, open, open. That's what I, I leave the small part in the middle. That's when you could grow up straight. It can be grow up wide. Okay. I don't see it. I cannot envision how this tree here can grow and extend to the point where it would actually reach the electrical wires. And so based on the evidence presented by the by the city, I find in favor of the city, and I will affirm the ticket, the citation, and sir, they will, um, the documents will be sent to him as to how he can make payments, correct? Uh, I mean, he'll, he, he has a $500 fine, is, if, if that's what your honor is finding for. In addition, um, under the code, um, It, it states under five, 20, chapter 29, 5-2309A um, that the city shall require ab abused trees to be replaced, so. All right, sir, you have a fine, plus the tree has to, must be replaced. I'm gonna replace the tree or the grow, and, and, and then if the tree was fell to break its stuff at the house, how, what, what I should do? I'm sorry. He's asking what he should do, and that if he had a situation where a tree's about to fall, he should call the city and have someone go out. He can't just take it upon himself to abuse the trees like he did in this case. And I, I don't see how that's even possible based on the distance Correct. from this tree to both the, the house itself and the electrical wires that you testified to. And so based on that, this is the reason why I affirm the ticket. And then the whole still there. I don't even finish remove, removing it. If you, you At this point, the what, the city, what the city is saying is that you may have to remove the tree altogether and replace it. Well, because, the, go ahead. If I may, that's determined by the Community Planning and Development Department. At that point, the arborist that's contracted through the city would determine whether or not the tree would either uh, suffice to grow back into the, its original conditions or if it needs to be taken down completely. At that point, CPND would make that decision. Okay, so you need to go to the city 
and um, talk to them, and then they will tell you exactly what your next step is going to be. Luck. Luck, yeah. What's it? Um... Can you please provide him with the information? Yes. All right. Okay, you may step down. Thank you. All right, sir. You can go with the officer, and he will provide you with all the information that you need. The next case is Lewis M. Duran, case number CTBPR 2019-00115. The Good. city would like to call Aaron Barber as a witness. Good morning. Please state your full name and relationship to the property. Uh, Lewis Duran, owner. Okay. Sir? I'm uh, Rogel Lorenzo. I'm uh, here to assist him with the construction matters. Okay. Thank you, sir. Witnessing. Okay. Ma'am, can you please state your name for the record? Erin Barber, City of North Miami Code Compliance. And how long have you been working in code compliance? Uh, I've been with the city 26 years next month. Now, did you issue a ticket violation on August 21st, 2019? Yes, I did. Now, was it for um, the property owner of um, Louis Duran? Yes, it was uh, for the property located at uh, 2029 Northeast 123 Street. Okay. And Ms. Barber, um, if I can please have the ticket on the screen. Do you recognize this? Yes, that's the citation that I wrote and issued. At this time, the city would like to introduce the ticket into evidence. Mm -hmm. Ms. Barber, what did you give um, the property owner a violation for? The ticket was written um, based on testimony from Officer Gary Beswick uh, for a building without a permit, interior remodeling, um, as again, as reported by um, Officer Gary Beswick. And how did you become involved? I was received a call from Officer Beswick to respond to the property. Okay. Can I please have the photos on the screen? Do you recognize these photographs? I do, yes. How do you recognize them? These were the photos that I had taken the day that the ticket was um, issued and posted. That was on August 21st, 2019? Yes, I believe so. Uh, did you see anyone on the property that day? No, I did not. Did you speak to anyone? No. Okay. Only with Officer Beswick. Now, can you explain to the court what is depicted here in um, this photograph? I mean, the uh, photo with the trailer um, it appears to be um, construction debris, maybe some tile, and the other photos uh, for the uh, posting of the stop work order and the citation. Now, you stated that you um, received information from Mr. Beswick. What information did you receive? Um, he said that as he approached the door, he did notice inside that there was quite a bit of work being um, that w were going on inside. I don't remember verbatim, um, but that there was clearly uh, work going on inside that would have required a permit. I have no further questions for this witness. Thank right. you. Mm -hmm. The city would like to call uh, Gary Beswick. No, just a second, please. Oh. Do you have any questions for this officer? Uh, we'll reserve the questions till when he's finished. Okay. Yes. All right, let me inquire, um, why is it that I'm not able to open my attachment? I was doing it prior, but now I can't because I needed to review the citation a little closely. Okay. And when you put it up on the screen, I can't really see it. Go down. Yeah. 
Yes. Like, what gives you off? Oh, shoot. Right here. Okay. What happened? So I don't have to keep calling you. Anybody in this one mm -hmm. is opening in the other one always. So for some reason it was switching you. Okay. So you see, you go to this one. The document changes the mm. I stay there, so you need to switch. Okay. Okay. All right. One second. Okay. Procedure? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, I believe we were on, um, if they have any questions that we're going to reserve, so I may <coughs> correct, so Mr. Beswick can testify. Okay. Mr. Beswick, can you please state your name for the record? Pierre Beswick. And can you please state your title? Minimum Austin Officer. And w how did you come across the property um, on August 24th, 21st, 2019, excuse me. Well, I was, I was a couple hours down, I went there for a complaint, and while I was investigating a complaint, I heard noise coming from a location, so I walked back outside and I saw, I saw the trailer attached to a truck, and I followed the sound, and in, the, and in front of where the trailer is parked, the door was open, and at least two persons was in there working. Um, and they, was using, they, was using, they was using a jackhammer. So basically the door was open. I walk inside, observe work going on. When you walk through the door to the left, there was a bathroom, a, a construction of a bathroom was in process. That's when the gentleman so walked you were, up. Uh, just, I'm sorry to interrupt you. So, so you witnessed work being done on the property yes. as you walked up yes. after hearing the Come sound. On. Now, um, the trailer that you speak of, is that the trailer that was depicted in the photographs earlier? That's correct. So the city would like to introduce the photographs um, taken by Ms. Barber into evidence. Okay. Um, did you speak to anyone on the property? Yes, I spoke to the gentleman right there. Okay. And he, he advised me to exit, and I exit the property. Okay, what was your conversation with him as you approached? Uh, I told him that he didn't need, ask him if he have any permit, which basically I already knew he didn't have a permit because I checked the system and I informed him that he required a permit. And he's basically saying he's not doing anything. And I tell him, well, I, I observe work going on. Now, did you notice any type of permits be, that were posted outside of the property? No. At any point? No. Okay. Um, was the gentleman who you speak of who's here, was he one of the two people that you saw working on the property? Yes. Okay. And is the gentleman next to him another person who was working on the property or no? Not the first time I've seen that gentleman. Okay. I have no further questions at this time. Okay. Do you have any questions for either of the city witnesses? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. um, my first question is, um, are you aware that the uh, city of North Miami adopted the Florida Building Code? Yeah, the building official is here, so I can. There's a copy of the city record. I'm sorry, can I take a look at what he's provided? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Okay. And have you read the building code by any chance? 
Nothing does, but I know okay. what our ordinance stated that oh. a permit is required okay. before you can before you can begin any kind of alteration. Ma'am, you're the one that wrote the ticket. I'm sorry, Judge. Are we focused? Are we? Is he done with Mr. Beswick? Not yet. We allow. do one witness at a time. Allow, allow, allow him to ask the questions, and then I'll give you an opportunity to redirect. Well, is he finished with Mr. Beswick for procedural yet, purposes? Are you done with Mr. Beswick? No, ma'am. Okay. okay. Uh, well, there are some exceptions in the Florida Building Code that does not require a permit. Are you aware of that? Yeah. But what you was doing okay, required which, a permit. My question is, which are those exceptions? Do you know? Well, you don't need a, per a permit to paint inside of your house. Or in this case, because it's it, um, it's a, a one-story building, if he was just laying some tile, on the, on, you don't need a permit for that. But again, what I observe required a permit. OK. What you observe and what the ticket was written on, it says that replacing floor tile, which does not require a permit. Look at the citation, please. Can you please put the uh, citation back? It states interior remodeling without the required building permit as witnessed by Officer Gary Beswick. Okay, we have a paper that he sent uh, a warning or a notice talking about floor tiles. Floor tiles are not required, which is what the evidence, only evidence that you have there uh, laying inside that trailer. Uh, that's one thing. The other issue. Is there a question, Judge? I'm confused. Are we, is, is this argument or is he asking a question? I am Give me one second. You it's indicated, sir, that you received something from the city that talks about uh, floor tiles, correct? Yeah. Okay, can we pull that up? Okay. Is that the, let's see, let me review the it citation. Says it is signed by him, by Mr. Do you have a copy? Yes. All right. Do I give it to her? Or you know, show it to her and then she'll pass it up. Trying to open stuff here. Whose who's phone is this? Please turn off your phones. It's distracting. Okay, Your Honor. Um, the violation that I wrote in September, uh, not September, that's a reinspection, and the August 21st, 2019, base college state, please obtain all required permits for interior renovation, alteration of bathroom, tile flooring, removal, and et cetera. I observe in process and no permits in file. On August 20th, 2019 at 2.27 p.m. And okay. I'll pass it on to you. Yes, because I, I don't know where to find it here. Notice of violation. That's under the citation notice, Judge. It's under the... Which one? It's under it's citation notice as well. Okay. In your screen. I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. For interior no. renovation, this was also an alteration provided. of bathroom, tile floor removal, and etc. I observed in progress and no permits on file. Okay. All right. And this one is dated. Is there a date? Oh, 821 2019. I don't see it here. It's, it's not here? Okay. <clears throat> All right. And do we have okay. photographs? Yes, nope. Judge. We've oh, I've already submitted them into evidence okay. previously. I see it. I see it. I'll yeah. pull it back up. I got it. Okay. There's sir, you may there's proceed. There's, okay. Sorry. There's also uh, work you can do inside your home that does not require a plumbing permit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a section in the code that specifies that. 
Uh, it says here, clearing stoppages and replacing leaks in pipes, valve fixtures, and removal and installation of water closets. Judge, I'm gonna object. Is, it, is this argument or are we still it's doing questioning? The, this is part of the code. He is, the, the is there a question? This is part of the code that the city adopted that is bound for. Correct, the, and that's fine for okay. argument, but there's at this a, time, there's, it's questioning, it's procedure. All right, ask, ask the questions of the is he, officer. Uh, my question and was, the, is he aware there are exceptions in the code regarding plumbing? That was my question, and I was trying to read, the, in case he didn't know, I was trying to read the, what the exceptions are. But if he knows, then uh, I'll... So, uh, Mr. Besrick, are you aware that there are exceptions to the code? Yes, I do. And what are some of the exceptions? As I said earlier, the paint in the in interior of your house, and if you turn it up, and this property is a f it's one story on the first floor, if you're doing tiling on the first floor, you don't need a permit for that. And also, the gentleman, he came into our office, in the billing office that's that day, accused me that I, he wasn't doing anything and I introduced him to the building official and the building official asked him to let him go to the property to do an inspection to let him, let him know if he need a permit or not and he refused. All right. Um, <coughs> okay. Any other questions for Mr. Beswick? I do have another section of the code I'd like to cite. Yes. Judge, questions. This is not argument. I'll, I'll allow it. That's over the city's objection. Go ahead, sir. It has to do with enforcement. And uh, one of the, uh, I can give you the papers in case you don't know, or would, would you like for me to read it so he understands? No, I, like now, I don't want you reading the whole thing. I, I no, wanted I just you to read get the, to where I, you I need to. I want to read the section that has to do with his actions. So okay. is this going that into day. evidence? I'm going to object to this being read unless it's going to be introduced into evidence. I can give you and the I'm papers, get, evidence. I'm going to pull this a, a copy evidence. of him. He's, he wants to. Um, then I'd like a moment to see it. Sure. It's highlighting yellow. So you're trying to introduce um, Florida Building Code section what? What it means is Florida Building Code is section uh, I don't have that section here. I have the preceding section which is 105.17. I, I take it it will be 105.16 part of the Building Code. Okay. So are we guessing which Code he's entering into evidence. Florida right? Building Code, ma'am. I will have an opportunity to review it. Did you review it? I reviewed it, Judge, but he's not citing to anything specifically, and this is a sheet of paper that doesn't have the actual code. I don't know all I see besides I didn't know that something, excuse me, sir, that says uh, 105 and it's highlighted in yellow what actual chapter it is and where it's coming from. I can view the, I can get the Florida Building Code online if you like to see it in case, but your offices obviously should be aware of the section because they're bound by it, and the Florida adopted the uh, Florida Building Code, everyone in that works in enforcement should be aware of the sections. It's Correct, part of Judge, the code. but I'm not introducing Give it into evidence. Correct. Sir, I this is also outside of the scope, as this case is under 5-32, for doing work without a permit, and he's referencing the building code. This is it not is even part the section of the that, we're, that the city violated him for. Ma'am, so it's outside the, of scope of this litigation. The guidelines for the city to follow are the Florida Building Code, code as it was adopted, and I gave you the paper <coughs> originally. You're bound by Judge, the regulations the of the code. Give me one second. I'm giving him some leeway here. Um, okay. Sir, do you have any other questions for no, Mr. Is, Beswick so that the uh, okay. um, city this can is, have an opportunity okay. to? This is at the heart of the issue that okay. happened that day. Inspecting any portion of the building structure. I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to make a closing argument. Okay. At this point, I want you to ask questions right. so I that I can give the city an opportunity to redirect, and okay. I'll give you an opportunity to question um, officer. Okay. The essence of this paragraph is says here that the only way that is there Mr. A Bresnik. I am going to do that if you, if you let me, it don't interrupt me. Okay, guys, brief. seriously, we're not going to be here all day. Okay, I'll be very brief. It, he's supposed to have consent to enter a property. 
And this is what this paper is about. He's, he was never allowed to enter. He did not gain prior permission to enter the property. And contrary to his statement, the owner here is to, will testify that the door was closed. He opened the door, walked in the room, and that is not allowed under the code. So he's any. So your question to Mr. Beswick is whether or not he had consent to enter your he property. He had consent to enter the property. Okay. Furthermore, the door was open. And no, no. The door was open. Okay, let me finish. Let me finish. Allow him. You ask him a question. Allow him an opportunity to respond. The door was open, and if you look at the picture, I have pictures show that when I walked up to the door, the door was open. I went inside, and basically, if I hear work going on, if any kind of construction going on, and the door is open, mm -hmm. once it's open, basically, I normally I enter until a person tells me to leave. When I didn't work, they're doing construction work. So once you're doing construction work, if the, if the door is wide open, we have all right to see what's going on. All right. Any other question for Mr. Beswick? I don't think he answered the question. He did, did he have permission to enter the property? Yes or no? I did not need permission. The door was wide open. Work was going on. Okay. So he's saying that he did not have permission. I'm, I'm listening to, to the... You don't have to paraphrase his response. I'm trying to understand that. I, I'm lost here. W w was the answer yes or no? Did you have permission? Again, the door was open, so I entered the property. Okay, anything he, else? He testi he willing he's testifying that the door was not open. No, he's not, he hasn't testified yet. I will okay. give you an opportunity to put on your okay. case. Right now, you're cross-examining um, the okay. city's witness. All right. I have no further questions. For this gentleman. Right, but I want to okay. I want to reiterate that the... Uh, I'll give you an no opportunity. Permission. I'll give you an opportunity to do that. Does the city have any questions for Mr. Veswick? No, Judge, the city's going to um, put on Mr. Pazillo. I'm sorry? No, not for Mr. Beswick, but the city is going to put on Mr. Stephen Pizzo. I don't know that if he's done with Ms. Barber. Oh, okay. Um, do, you, are you, do you have any questions for Officer Barber? No, because she wasn't part of the uh, investigation. He just, she just wrote the ticket. Okay. No All right. So you, you want Mr. Beswick to step down? Yes. Okay. For, for now, Judge. Okay. Good morning, sir. Can you please state your name for the record? Stephen Pizzolo, building official for the city of North Miami. And how long have you been the building official? Uh, going on five years. Now, do you recognize the gentleman, Mr. Duran, who's here in, in court today? Yes. Okay. And how do you recognize him? He came into our calendar to talk about uh, the stop work orders that were issued and said that he wasn't doing any work. I said, well, any one of the violation abated immediately. And I told him, I said, if you want to, let's go to your house right now. If the work didn't require permits, we'll, I'll take care of the violation immediately. And what was his response? Uh, he said, no, you're not coming onto my property. So you gave him an opportunity to, um, to, to either cure his violation or see if what he was saying was actually true? Yes. Okay. Now, um, just to verify, this is regarding the property at 2029 Northeast 123rd Street? Yes. Okay. Did you have any further involvement with him? No. Now, um, did you have an opportunity to, to see um, the photos in this case? Yes, I did. And did you have an opportunity um, that day you were with, let me strike that, that day you were with Mr. Beswick? No, I was not. Okay. Did you ever hear from Mr. Beswick regarding this case? Yes, I did. Okay. And what was, uh, what did your conversation entail? Uh, Mr. Beswick gave me the details of, of how he came upon it and what he did including the fact that he walked up the door, heard Jack hammering, he said that the door was open, and, uh, and then the owner told him to leave, and he left at that point in time. Now, Mr. Pizzolo, you're obviously familiar with uh, the building code, correct? I am the authority having <laughs> jurisdiction in the city. Okay, now, is there any exception um, regarding doing work without a permit, as in something that, you know, for example, Mr. Beswick told you that he heard Jack hammering from down the street, and what he witnessed, is there any exception that would fall under the the building code regarding this incident doing the work that was pr that was currently going on there no because Correct. even though you know and there is there is a requirement for a certain tile to be permitted and inspected okay no further questions at this time yeah. sir do you have any questions for the building yes. code of official it's a customary for the building official to offer to uh, 
go to a job site uh, and offer his uh, his ep expertise or opinions. This is something you commonly do. Yes. Okay. Is, but this is voluntary. He, the homeowner is not obligated to uh, to let you in this home. No, is they're, they're they're not under that process now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything further? Nothing further from the city. Okay, the city rest. Sir, you have no more questions for the city official, correct? I just wanna say the following. Mm -hmm. I believe his rights were violated in the minute that the person entered his home without permission and clearly Judge, stated are we I'm in sorry, the code. are we doing closing? No, I thought you wanted to put on your case. I thought you wanted this gentleman to testify. No? No. Okay, no more testimony? No. Nope. Okay, all right, you guys may step down. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, sir, you wanted to make your argument. I'll, I'll listen. Yes. What I wanted to say was that his rights were violated the moment that the uh, person entered his home without permission. It's clearly stated in the code, the Florida Building Code, that he must have prior permission, authorization to enter someone's home. Whether the door is open or not, it doesn't stay that. What it does stay, to enter somebody's property, you have to have permission. Your house, just because the door is open, does not authorize me to enter your home while you're there with your family. It's just common sense. He, in order to do that, he has to have a warrant, and that is also in the code. He did not have a warrant at the time. He entered the home illegally, and they, the city has, does not have any proof of actual work going on. What we have is the testimony of, uh, of the original inspector that I don't know why he didn't write a ticket. Maybe he's not a <coughs> able to write a ticket, but I think what we have here is a misinterpretation of the code based on the fact that they're not aware there are exceptions to the code. But the main thing, the most important thing as the people's rights should not be violated in the process of doing an investigation or pursuing a violation. And this is what he did, and it's completely wrong. For anyone to enter anyone's home, just because the door open does not invite the police or anyone to enter a home. And that's what he did. Now, the door was closed, so the homeowner would testify to that. Well, he hasn't testified, and you okay. told me that he's not testifying. Uh, you can go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, no, that's, the city's okay, going to no object problem. to our closing, Judge. Okay, he can't no testify problem. at this point. No All right. Are you done? Yes. You're arrested. Okay. The city wish to respond? Yes, Judge. We're here under Section 5-32, which is doing work without a permit. Under our code, under Chapter 21.31A, it says that the officer just needs to have a reasonable cause to believe that there is a violation of what occurred. Now, you heard testimony from Mr. Beswick who got on the stand and he said that he heard from down the street that there was work being done. He walked to the property and he saw with his own eyes not one but two people working on the property. In addition, you heard testimony from Ms. Barbara who came on the scene. She took photographs and Your Honor has photographs into evidence which shows the trailer directly across the street as they testified from this property with work being done and I'll um, pull it up one second. which shows all types of debris. And I'm referring to um, this photograph here depicted on the left. Now, Your Honor heard testimony from the building official, Mr. Pizzillo, and he stated that there was no exception for doing work without a permit. There is no evidence that states here with, with the testimony that came out that Mr. Beswick went inside of this property, went inside of this home and violated anybody's rights. On the contrary, Mr. Bestwick got on the stand and he stated that he heard, he walked up, and he saw actually what happened that day. And he even pointed to the gentleman who's here in court today and said, this is, this is one out of the two gentlemen who I saw on the property who was working um, you know, on the property. And that doesn't require him to go inside. Um, one of the things under um, our code, under 
uh, 21.33H um, for ticket appeals, it's the greater weight of the evidence, um, Your Honor. And here the city presented three witnesses, Ms. Barbara, who took the photographs and who witnessed um, the debris from the work that was being done on, the, on this property, Mr. Beswick, who was the one who came across this property and has experience and knows um, the violations and when work is being done, and he saw that. And our building official who got on the stand and told Your Honor that, yes, you do need a permit for this. No, there is no exception under the code. And in addition, he even gave the homeowner the opportunity to go on his property and cure any situation that he had. Now, if the homeowner was so concerned with this case being abated, in this case disappearing and going away, he simply would have said, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and coming to see that we're actually not doing work on this property. You heard testimony from Mr. Beswick that said, he said he looked around the property and there was no permits listed anywhere. He's in complete violation um, under 5-32 of conducting work on the property. Um, and for those reasons, um, the, the city states that the greater weight of the evidence is presented and has been presented here today. Sir? Are you allowing yeah. rebuttal from the defense? Correct. May I add something? Yes. Yeah. We, we, he saw the tiles. There's no permit required for the removal of the tiles. And he didn't have permission to enter my property, just for the record. Just a second. Yes, and Junior. The door was closed. Okay, sir, you need to speak into the mic because everything is being recorded. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna add one more time that he entered the house, the door was closed, he entered without permission. There's no permit required for removing the floor tiles and that's what was on the trailer. All right, sir, thank you. On the trailer, I see tiles. Are the are, are these only tiles, or is there something else that I should be seeing in here? It's only tiles. Judge, I, I don't want to testify. Do you have a question specifically for one of the witnesses? And Mr. Beswick. Your testimony, is, is it just tiles that I'm looking at or are there more? Well, well, I don't recall what and what was in the trailer, but mm -hmm. based on what I observed inside of the of the homes, basically it was work, the work that he was doing required permit. I don't recall, I didn't look in the, I didn't look in the trailer to see what and what was in there. I mm -hmm. didn't do a specific inspection of the trailer to what type of debris actually mm -hmm. was inside of the trailer. Okay. Basically the trailer basically I saw the trailer and I followed the sound. The door was open, open basically, and I walked in and I observed uh, the bathroom that was done to the left after you entered the main house and whatever else they was doing that I could not observe. And you do need a permit for that, Judge. There's, there's no exception that states that um, to do work, that towel removal in the bathroom, that that's an exception under our code. Okay. Who testified that it was an exception? Did any of you Nobody, testify? Nobody. It's their contention. Oh, it's an I exception, see. But I I'm see. telling you that it's okay. not. All right. I thought I. Um, I thought I heard Mr. Brazil. Mr. Brazil, you did not testify that there is an exception, correct? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Beswick. No, actually, if, if you're tiling a bathroom, it, it does require a permit, and under 44 CFR Code of Federal Regulations, any any improvement in a flood zone requires a permit. This house is located in the flood zone and tile is one of the th four coverings as one of the things that is inspected. Okay. All right. Well, anything else? Your Honor, that was tile from the living room. That's all. Okay. Based on the information that I, based on the evidence that I um, presented by the city, by the city's witnesses, the building official, um, Mr. Beswick and Ms. Barber, I do find that the violation exists. Um, I, I find in favor of the city. Typically, 
I would say um, if the city official availed himself to you and say, um, the work that you're doing, if I see that it's not in violation of any code, you know, then I will dismiss this matter. And you guys didn't give him an opportunity to do that. If you believe that um, the work that you were doing inside the house did not require a, a permit and you had an opportunity to speak to the building official who is very familiar with the type of work and he's telling you that I'll see what it is that you're, you're doing. If it's not required, then I will dismiss this ticket. Mm -hmm. And you didn't take him up on it. But the testimony that I heard here today is that a permit was required. The door was ajar or open, which give him the, um, the, the reasonable cause that he needed to be able to investigate and notice that the work that was being done inside the property required a permit. And so this is what my decision is based on. Yeah, but the, the door was not ajar, the door was not open, the door was closed, he just he just went in and opened it himself. And there's no permit for the floor tiles. You, you know, it's that's very unfair. Sir, the and you know when I went to the city to ask him about the permit, Mr. Fazzolo was a very aggressive individual, and he didn't Judge. say it very nicely. I'm going to go with you to your house. Actually, I felt threatened by the way he addressed me, and I was not a about to be alone with that gentleman in my ho in my house. So, I'm sorry. He did, he wasn't a very polite and very nice individual. He he pretty much said it in a very <coughs> firm, strict way, and I actually felt threatened by his command. So the reason that I suck to come here is to uh, explain my case. I didn't think that he um, was in a situation to uh, give me any leeway. All right. So. Okay. Well, Next case. Your Honor. You know, I might just say oh. it's very important because the code does state, and I would like for them to read it. That Judge, are we needs still hearing an argument? I'm going to object at this point. Your Honor has home. ruled. I have ruled, and, and you know, sometimes the, the, the residents just want to be able to vent and s so speak their minds, and, you know, that's not going to sway my decision one way or another. I have already ruled, but I'm giving him an opportunity to say what's in his heart. But um, my ruling is that I will affirm the ticket. Thank you, guys. The next case is William Kelly and W. Marianne W. Case number CTETR 2019-00007. Did we skip number three? Oh, did we skip Nasser? Yes, yes, I did. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, sir. We'll call you. There's <laughs> one case before you. The next case is Nazir Hazendek, case number CTBPR 2019-00098. Is anyone here for, is it? Nasser or Naser? N A S E R. The property address. No one's is here for this case. Ten seventy Northwest One Hundred Twenty Fourth Street. Who's our code officer on this one? John Dorville. Okay, Mr. Dorville is here. Okay. Next we'll proceed. Oh, without okay. Mm -hmm. Sir, can you please state your name for the record? John Dorville. And can you please state your title? Code officer. And how long have you been a code officer? Roughly two years. Now, Mr. Dorville, did um, you issue a civil violation ticket to the property um, at 1070 Northwest 124th Street in North Miami, Florida on 7-13-19? I did. Do you recognize this? Yes. How do you recognize this? My handwriting, my signature. Is this the um, violation ticket you issued? Yes. The city would like to introduce this violation into evidence, Your Honor. This is you, sir? No, I'm, that's my wife. Uh, we bought the property. But the ticket was issued to the previous owner. And, uh, okay, so we're talking uh, about property located. Let's give the address again so we'll make sure that sure. we... Sure, it's 1070 Northwest 124th right, Street. Right. Okay, all right, and this is your, you're the new owner, correct? Right. 
Yes. Okay. All right, sir. What? I'm sorry. State your full name for the record. Okay, Manuel Manuel Charles C H A L L E S. But uh, uh, I'm along with my wife Josiah Josahira Corman. Okay. I got okay. A, I got a I got a, a power of attorney here for her from her because she's out of town now. That's fine. You're your co-owner. You're right. also the owner of the Can property. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. And when did you bought this property? Uh, in August. August of 2019? Year. Right. Okay, so it's probably not reflected on the um, property appraisers yet. Okay. One second, Judge. Um, Judge, can I just inquire who um, requested who requested the appeal? Was it the new homeowner or the um, previous homeowner? Sir, uh -huh. how did you know to come here? What's what's? Well, because uh, we received the notice of appeal. Okay. Yes, it's not even our name, but it's in the property name. Okay. Because uh, inspector, he w he stopped by. Uh, on the day that we were doing some uh, job on the outside of the property, the, prom the plumber, we have a pipe clog with a, and, and have a broken somewhere because he see that there was some dirt inside and everything. And uh, he he tried to fix it, but uh, I g uh, he, he was going to remove some roots from the big tree that we have there blocking the pipe there. And uh, I didn't even know he was bringing any heavy equipment or nothing. I wasn't even there. Because we had some permits open on different uh, jobs that we were doing at the property. I have them here. They were close to here. Along the, among them, there was uh, one for for plumbing, but not that particular. Thing. The, it just happened that we found that the pipe was clogged there. Because that house was abandoned for some some time there, so and uh, so you you bought you purchased the property in August, correct? Right. right. Okay. The citation was issued in July. Yes. Not in July. The citation not, not July? was for July 13, but I am noticing here on the appeal request. I pulled it up. If we can put it on the screen. Mm -hmm. Um. The new property owner, and this is stamped, if your honor can see, July 17, mm -hmm. um, is the one who requested the hearing. So literally four days after. Right. So I'm not sure how they took over the property in August if the work was done and the ticket was issued on the 13th of July. Mm -hmm. And then this appeal request was from the new, new property, property owner in July. Mm -hmm. Right. Somewhere. 